Welcome to section 21 of the parasites. This is our overview figure showing the parasites you need to know for step one. In this lecture, we will be talking about the first cestode, Tania solium. Let's first hash out the life cycle of Tania solium. Understanding this process will really help you understand why there are two different presentations or diseases created by this parasite. The top half of the diagram usually takes place in a pig and the bottom half usually takes place in a human. First, the pig will eat an egg, and the egg, which you can see here, is found in stool, and the stool with the egg usually contaminates the pig's food, which is why the pig ate it. The egg then enters the intestines and releases larvae, which you can see right here. The larvae will then travel to the pig's muscle or brain. Upon reaching the destination, the larvae will form a cystocircus, basically just a cyst surrounding the larvae. So if it's in the muscle, we call that cystocircosis, and if it ever enters the brain, that's called neurocystocircosis. Now pork meat may contain cystocirci. So this is one of the reasons you wanna be sure to thoroughly cook your pork meat before eating it. So now we're in the human part and the human eats undercooked pork that has a cystocircus in it. And that cystocircus ends up going to the intestines and matures into an adult. So you could say that the encysted larvae, the cystocircus, will mature into an adult. So this disease causes intestinal tapeworm, as you can see labeled right here. And this can cause diarrhea and other nonspecific symptoms, like bloating and abdominal pain. And then what happens is the adult tapeworm will release eggs. These eggs will be shed in the stool. And if the pig's food is contaminated with a human feces, then the pig will eat it and the life cycle will continue. So with this conceptual framework, let's dive into the image to help you memorize the details of Tania solium. Our story takes place in an outdoor tanning salon. Kind of funny that the salon is outdoors since you could just as easily get tanned by being outside. Anyways, tanning salon sounds like Tania Solium, the parasite we're discussing. Unfortunately for the tanning salon, they happen to build their business adjacent to a pig farm. Not a great idea. Pig smell super gross after all. And if you look at those pigs, you will see they have large nasty cysts on them. Sadly, this confused old woman is trying to get these young girls to eat some of the cysts off of her pig. I guess as soon as these young girls got out of the tanning booth, they were pushed into this mud and bossed around by this silly old woman. The girls are too polite to resist. I hope they don't actually eat those insisted larvae. Yikes. Anyways, these cysts with the larvae on the pigs should help you remember the Tania solium cysts or cystocirci that are transmitted through undercooked pork. Now this old woman has a hillbilly son, and we can see him down here. Look at him trying to show off his taped worms to those other victims. He collects worms by taping them on this paper, and he likes to show them off. Anyways, these taped worms represent tapeworms the group of parasites to which Tania solium belongs. Here is a microscopic image showing the Tania tapeworm right here. Now these big worms here in the mud are simply a symbolic extension of those tapeworms we just showed you. The brown mud represents diarrhea. So putting the worms and the diarrhea together will help you remember that intestinal tapeworm causes diarrhea. And people acquire intestinal tapeworm through ingestion of encysted larvae. And if we look back at the life cycle down here, we can see that when humans eat undercooked pork, they can eat the encysted larvae, or cystocircus. And when ingested, it leads to intestinal tapeworm. Now these people over here are casually eating pretzels and witnessing these poor girls getting pushed into the mud. You can see that these two people are worried for the girls as they wave their hands in protest. The pretzels they hold represent praziquantel, the treatment for intestinal tapeworm. So pretzels, praziquantel. Freaked out by the monstrous worm, this hen is scurrying away dropping an egg with each step along her flight. A health inspector was called to the area to check on what food was being produced and sold. Look at him inspecting that muddy egg. This represents how intestinal tapeworm is diagnosed. You identify eggs in the stool. The test you order is called an ONP, which stands for ova and parasite. Ova referring to the egg of the parasite. So when you're concerned a patient may have intestinal tapeworm, order an ONP to look for the eggs. Here's a microscopic image of a tania egg shown in a stool sample. Now look to the left of the image now. There's an outhouse with poo spilling out of it, engulfing the nearby grass. This old man, just as confused as the old woman from earlier in the story, tries to sell people this grass covered in poop. I don't know where these hillbillies got their business license. Anyways, it looks like there were several other hens that ran away from the worm pit, each leaving behind an egg. They left eggs in the wagon filled with poo and grass, as well as an area outside of the outhouse, with all that poo spilling out of it. Well, the outhouse with poo coming out of it is a symbol for human feces, and the chicken eggs are a symbol for Tania solium eggs. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that the ingestion of human feces contaminated with Tania eggs is what causes this part of the disease. And unfortunately, this tanning salon attendee wasn't scared away from what the farmer was selling. She has eaten some of those eggs and now has cysts of her own. Look at those nasty growths popping up all over this poor girl. This represents the disease caused by Tania, which is known as cystocircosis. The eggs, when ingested, form larvae that travel to parts of the body, such as skeletal muscle. When the larvae arrive at the tissue they will reside in, they form a cystocircus. Basically, 
cysts in your tissue. These cystocerci give the disease the name cystocercosis. So again, woman eating eggs and getting cysts stands for ingestion of parasite eggs causing cystocercosis. You can even see that one of the boils has popped up on this woman's head. This represents the fact that the larvae can form cystocerci in the brain as well, which makes it called neurocystocercosis. This is far more dangerous than simply having cysts in the muscle. To help reinforce infection of the brain, we have hats on these two people. The man buying some eggs and that farmer. They both have hats on. That's a symbol we typically use for meningitis. But the main symbol for neurocystocercosis is, once again, the boil on this poor girl's head. So to review, pigs normally ingest the eggs. But if a human does, they can get that dreadful disease, cystocercosis or neurocystocercosis. Which is what happened to this poor girl. She ingested eggs, then she got cystocercosis, and actually ended up getting neurocystocercosis as well. Now let's expound on what neurocystocercosis presents like. This old farmer was trying to water his egg-infested poo grass before he gave the hard sell to those other visitors. Unfortunately, he stepped on the water hose while it was still running. You can see he's caused quite a bit of buildup before the blockage. All this water building up with high pressure in front of the blockage represents hydrocephalus, more specifically, obstructive hydrocephalus, which occurs in neurocystocercosis when the cystocercus prevents proper flow of the CSF. Now it looks like one of the nearby tanning booths is malfunctioning. Thankfully, no one is inside it because it's shaking horribly, almost like it's having a seizure. This seizing tanning booth does in fact represent seizure, which is a known manifestation of cystocerci in the brain. So again, seizing tanning booth stands for seizures with neurocystocercosis. Now look at the yellow lines beaming out of the seizing booth. One of the yellow beams is extending to the head of the poor girl with the cysts all over her body. This booth with the yellow beams coming out of it represents a CT scan. And the fact that one of the beams is reaching her cyst on her head represents how neurocystocercosis is diagnosed with a CT scan. Here is a CT scan showing neurocystocercosis. You can see all these cystocerci eating up this poor patient's brain. It just seems so invasive. Kind of makes me angry at this parasite. Now here is the receptionist to the outdoor tanning salon. Like many employees, he's not overly invested in his employer's business. As you can clearly see by him totally ignoring the malfunctioning machine behind him and all the customers are getting accosted by confused farmers. So obviously, he's not super concerned with anybody else. Anyways, I guess his ignorance has kept him out of trouble because you can see that he's just sitting here eating a pretzel not eating other ridiculous things that the farmers are selling. Well, this pretzel represents praziquantel, the treatment for cystocercosis. So really, it's the exact same treatment as for intestinal tapeworm. So pretzel for praziquantel. But the receptionist is also reading a book. You can see from the title, Harvey Porter and Albus. You may recall Albus is one of the magical mentors to Harvey Porter. We like to use Albus to represent albendazole. Albendazole is used in the treatment of neurocystocercosis specifically. You can see a beam from the seizing machine reaching toward the book. Remember that seizures are caused by neurocystocercosis. So hopefully this idea will help you remember that albendazole is reserved for neurocystocercosis. Now that we've covered all the items in the image, let's do a question to apply what you've learned. A 45-year-old butcher presents to the clinic with diarrhea and abdominal pain for several weeks. He indicates that he routinely eats scraps of uncooked pork while he is butchering. The physician notes that the patient may have acquired a tapeworm infection from the pork. Assuming the physician is correct, which of the following statements is true? A. The infection may eventually cause seizures. B. Diagnosis will be confirmed with eggs found in the stool. C. Albendazole should be part of the treatment regimen. Or D. The patient ingested Tania solium eggs to acquire the infection. Hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this patient has symptoms of intestinal tapeworm. He has diarrhea and abdominal pain. He also routinely eats scraps of uncooked pork. With that in mind, which answer choice is correct? Choice B. Diagnosis will be confirmed with eggs found in the stool. Recall that intestinal tania infections are diagnosed using stool samples. Recall from our image that intestinal tania infections are on this right part of the image. And over here, we have the health inspector who's looking at one of those muddy eggs. This represents that intestinal tapeworm is diagnosed by identifying eggs in the stool. Conversely, cystocercosis and neurocystocercosis is on the left part of the image. And we have that malfunctioning tanning booth shooting rays around indicating that neurocystocercosis and cystocercosis are diagnosed using a CT scan. Now choice A is incorrect because this describes neurocystocercosis. To acquire this infection, one must eat the eggs found in feces. The eggs will hatch in the body, then form larvae that go to the brain and form cysts, creating neurocystocercosis. However, our patient ate undercooked pork, which makes him susceptible to ingesting encysted larvae, not eggs. So he is not at risk of neurocystocercosis. Choice C is wrong because this is part of the treatment regimen for neurocystocercosis, not intestinal tapeworm. Finally, choice D is incorrect because ingestion of tinea eggs leads to cystocercosis, not intestinal tapeworm, like our patient has. And that should be all you need to know about tinea solium.